functions at continuous over the interval of integration improper integrals or when the interval of integration is infinite improper integrals Integrals Improper integrals Don't worry Be happy Don't worry, be happy Alright, so what we're going to study in this video is improper integrals So let me start with a motivational example Suppose that a chemical is being produced at a rate of e to the minus t moles per second. So I've got a nice little graph here uh, where I've just plotted the rate of production of the chemical. Now if I ask you to calculate what the amount of chemical produced between times t equals to zero and t equals capital T is, well, you probably know how to do it. What you want to do is just integrate the rate of production between t equals to zero and t equals capital T. And this is certainly something you can do. You get minus e to the minus t between 0 and capital T, which is just minus e to the minus capital T minus minus e to 0, or in other words, 1 minus e to the minus capital T. That is the exact amount of chemical which is produced between these two times. All right, but if I ask you the following, what is the amount of chemical produced if the experiment ran forever? That's a good question. Now you may be tempted to say, well, it's got to be infinite. If I keep running the experiment, uh, there's going to be an infinite amount of chemical produced. That's not so obvious. The way we can formulate mathematically what we're trying to calculate would be as an integral, but now between times t equals to zero and t equals infinity, that's what forever means mathematically, right? You let t go to infinity of e to the minus t dt. So somehow this is what we want to calculate. But how can we make sense of that? How can we calculate that mathematically? Now you can also look at it geometrically. What this means is that we're trying to calculate the area under the curve, but all the way to infinity. Is that infinite or is that finite? Good question. So let's try to define what this is mathematically. This is exactly what an improper integral of the first type is. So those are definite integrals where the interval of integration is infinite. So how do we define that mathematically? Well, if you have the, an integral which exists for all t greater or equal to a, you define the improper integral here as being the limit, as t goes to infinity, of this definite integral. So you let the upper limit of integration uh, run to infinity. Now, of course, you can do the exact same thing for the lower limit, where you let it go to minus infinity. And that's another type of improper integrals. But now there's a good question. There's a limit involved. So this may not exist. The limit does not always exist. Right? It could be finite, but it could also be infinite. So we have to distinguish between these two cases. So we say that these improper integrals are convergent if the limit exists, and it is divergent if it does not exist. So by exists here we mean it's a finite number. So if it's infinite, then uh, the integral is divergent. All right, so we can also uh, define improper integrals where both limits of integration run to infinity. So this is how we would, would, we would define that. So if uh, on both sides the integral is convergent, then we can define the integral between minus infinity to infinity as just being the sum of the two. And in fact, of course, any real number a can be used here. The left-hand side will just be the same. Okay, so these are uh, improper integrals. So let's go back to our problem and try to evaluate now the uh, amount of chemical which is produced if you let the experiment run forever. So we want to calculate this integral. But now we know how to do it. So this improper integral is defined as being the limit, so then we call the upper limit of integration x. So the limit as x goes to infinity of the integral between 0 and x e to the minus t dt. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity. So this integral we've already evaluated in the first slide. That was 1 minus e to the minus x. So we want to evaluate now this limit, but as x goes to infinity, 
e to the minus x goes to 0, so this is exactly equal to 1. So it turns out that in this case, the amount of chemical produced is not infinite, it's exactly one mole, which is pretty cool. And similarly, from the geometric point of view, what that means is that the area under this exponential curve here, even if you go all the way to infinity, remains finite, and the area here is exactly equal to 1. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's do a second example. Suppose that you want to calculate the integral between 1 and infinity of the function 1 over x. Well, we can do that again. This is the limit as, let me now call it t. t goes to infinity, infinity of the definite integral between 1 and t of 1 over x dx. You can certainly integrate this function. So the integral of 1 over x is just ln of x, 1 and t. So this is the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t minus ln of 1, but of course ln of 1 is just 0, so I end up with the limit as t goes to infinity of ln of t, but this is just infinite. So in this case, it turns out that the improper integral here diverges. In the previous case, it converged because we got 1, but here it diverges because it's not the limit does not exist, so it's infinite. Now what's quite interesting is that if you sketch the graph of the function here, 1 over x, it looks very similar to the function that we had before, but it's slightly different. And now it's got a very di different behavior. So if this is 1 and you uh, calculate this integral, what you're actually calculating is the area here under the curve all the way to infinity. Now in the previous case, in the exponential case, it turned out that this area was finite. In this case, it turns out that this area, even though it looks very, very similar, is actually infinite. So it's not obvious. Just looking at a graph, it's very hard to see whether improper integrals will be finite, uh, will converge or not. So you really have to evaluate the limits carefully and figure out whether they're finite or infinite, uh, or in other words, whether the improper integral converges or diverges. Okay, so let's now study another type of improper integrals, which is called improper integrals of the second type. So let me start by doing a cool calculation. Suppose that I want to calculate the integral between minus one and two, of the function 1 over x squared dx. Well, I can certainly evaluate this integral. This will be just minus 1 over x between minus 1 and 2. And then if I substitute back, I get minus 1 over 2 minus minus 1 over minus 1. So this is just minus 3 half. All right, so let's see if this answer is correct. So let me sketch the graph of the function. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the function 1 over x squared is actually positive everywhere. It looks like that. Okay, and what I'm doing here is integrating between the point x equals minus 1 and x equals to 2. So somehow, I'm kind of calculating the area here under the curve. But what I get here is that if the function is positive everywhere, in particular over the integral of integration, then certainly the integral should also be positive, right? Because it's calculating the area under the curve, so how could it be negative? But I've just calculated that it gives me minus 3 half. What's going on? Is there anything wrong? Well, it turns out that, yes, there is something wrong with my calculation. The problem is that the function 1 over x squared is not continuous over my interval of integration. It's actually discontinuous at x equals to 0. More precisely, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0. So whenever the function has a discontinuity over the interval of integration, we have to be very careful. We can't just do simple calculation like that. And that's exactly what improper integrals of the second type are about. All right, so let me define what these are. So improper integrals of type 2 are definite integrals where the function has a discontinuity somewhere over the integral of integration. Now, there's... Uh, First type, uh, the, the, the first case would be where the discontinuity is at the right uh, limit of integration. And in this case, we define the improper integral as being the limit of the definite integrals, where we send t to the right side of the limit of integration, so we approach from the left. And we can do the exact same thing where the discontinuity is on the left limit of integration, so the improper integral is defined as being the limit, the definite integral, as t approaches a, but from the right side. Now, just as for improper integrals of the first type, 
there's some limits involved here, so these limits may not exist. So we have to be careful. We say that the integral, the improper integral is convergent if the limit exists, and divergent if it does not exist. Now we can also define improper integrals in the case where the discontinuity is somewhere in the middle of the interval and not necessarily at the endpoints. So here's how we do it. So if f has a discontinuity at a point c in the interval of integration, and, and suppose that both of these improper integrals are convergent, then we define the integral over the uh, between a and b as being the sum of the two improper integrals, one from the left side of the discontinuity and one from the right side of the discontinuity. All right, so let's apply that to the example that we had. So we were calculating the integral between minus 1 and 2 of 1 over x squared dx. And now we've uh, realized that there's a discontinuity at x equals to 0. So we need to split the integral into an integral on the left side of the discontinuity and an integral on the right side of the discontinuity. Now these are improper integrals because the function has a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0. But we know how to define those, so we can define those in terms of limits. So here I'm approaching the right point of integration, so I'm approaching from the left. And in the other one, I'll be approaching from the right. All right, and now I can do the calculations. These are just definite integrals, so I can evaluate them and take the limit afterwards. So here I'll get the, the integral of 1 over x squared gives me 1 over x between minus 1 and t. Same thing here, get minus 1 over x, but between t and 2. All right, you can then evaluate to get minus 1 over t plus 1 here, plus the limit t goes to 0 plus minus 1 over 2, minus minus, so plus 1 over t. So all I have to do now is evaluate the limits. So as t goes to 0 minus, so it approaches 0 from the left-hand side, this thing here blows up to plus infinity, so the whole thing here becomes plus infinity. And for the second term, then I'm approaching 0 but from the right side, so the thing here will blow up to plus infinity as well. So I get infinity plus infinity, which is just infinite. So in this case, the improper integral diverges. But now that makes a lot more sense. So what this is saying, if you remember the picture I had, this is my function here, 1 over t squared. What this is saying is that the integral between minus 1 and 2, which is calculating the area here, is infinite. So this area actually is infinite in this case. That's fine. Now it could happen that it's finite. Uh, these kind of improper integrals may be finite. So uh, in fact, let me do an example where we'll get a finite result. So suppose that I want to integrate between 0 and 1 the function 1 over square root of x dx. All right, so if I were to sketch the graph of the function square root of x, or 1 over square root of x, you would get something like that. Now I'm talking about the integral between 0 and 1, so clearly the function has a discontinuity, x equals to 0, and I'm trying to evaluate the area here. It's not clear from the graph whether it's finite or infinite. We actually need to do the calculation. Okay, so to make sense of that, I have to take care of the discontinuity at x equals to 0. So I'm going to define that as being the limit as t approaches 0 from the right of the definite integral between 1 and t, t and 1. Now again, I can certainly evaluate the definite integral here. So the integral of 1 over square root of x should be 2 times square root of x between t and 1. So I get the limit as t goes to 0 plus of 2 times square root of 1, so that's 2, minus 2 times square root of t. But now as t goes to 0, this term here goes to 0, but this remains finite, so the answer is t. So in this case, the integral converges because I got a finite number. So in other words, the area here, even though it looks like it might be infinite, turns out to be finite. It's exactly equal to 2. All right, so these were improper integrals of the second type. And altogether, improper integrals are either integrals such that the interval of integration is infinite or such that the function has a discontinuity. In both cases, we need limits to define uh, these improper integrals. And depending on whether the limit exists or not, 
we say that these integrals converge or diverge.